Okay, so we're going to do one exam question on Pearson's and linear regression. Okay, now what Pearson's and linear regression is all about, it's looking to see whether there's a link between two different types of data, so two variables, and then looking to see if we can make an equation and predict results. That's what we're effectively doing here. So in this particular question, we have the following information. It says, in the mountain range, there appears to be a relationship between the number of trees growing in the region, number of trees, this is our X data, and the depth of snow in winter, and this is our Y data. So depth of snow is in centimeters, and this is, this is our Y, this is our X, and these are our two different variables. So a set of 10 areas were chosen, so we've got 10 rows here, and each row and sorry, in each area, the number of trees was counted and the depth of snow measured. So in this particular area, there were 45 trees and the depth of snow was 30 centimeters and so on. And we're trying to see if there's a link between those two. Okay. Right now, the first thing it asks us to do is this. So not relating to Pearson's or linear regression just yet, but asking us to work out these four things. The mean number of trees, the standard deviation number of trees, and the mean of depth of snow and the standard deviation of depth of snow. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that all on the calculator. So let's get our calculator up. Okay, and then we make a brand new spreadsheet, 1.1, no tabs. Okay, and then what we're going to have to do is type in the table as we see it. So let's label the columns first of all. So X was the number of trees and Y was the depth of snow. And then we're going to literally have to type in the data the way we see it, 45, 75. Okay, I'm just going to pause it and do the rest. Okay, so I've typed all the data in. So here's my X list and here's my Y list. Now let's work out the means and standard deviations. So we go to menu, stats, stats calculation, and we want the second one because we're dealing with two separate variables here, number of trees and depth of snow. So the second one, number two variables. Okay, right, now we've labeled the columns X and Y, just like the table. And if we tell it, right, well, it's asking us where our X list is, so if we pick the drop down menu and choose column X and then it says where's our Y list and if we choose the drop down menu we choose Y and then to have those both in if we press tab okay we haven't got a frequency or categories but this column is important this table uh, this value is important it says where do you want the results to go well column C is definitely empty I've used A and B so C is definitely empty so press OK right and let's see right first of all it tells us, well, it wants, us the, it wants the mean number of trees. Well, X is the number of trees, so X bar is the mean number of trees, and that's 50, so I'd write 50 here. Okay, and wants the standard deviation of the number of trees, standard deviation of trees. Again, we're looking at variable X, so sigma X would be 16.8, so standard deviation number of trees is 16.8. Okay, then it wants us to work out the mean depth of snow. Well, the depth of snow is variable y. So again, we're looking for y bar. That's the uh, mean for the y data. That's 30.5. And then it also wants the standard deviation of the depth of snow. Well, that's sigma y. And that will be 12.3. So we'd write 30.5 here and 12.3 here. Okay, let's look at the next question. Right, first of all, I'm just going to delete this. Okay, because that's to do with the previous syllabus. All right, it says this. It says, write down the product moment correlation coefficient. So basically, that's asking for the value of Pearson's, Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. And it's got the letter R. So if we go, get, go back to the calculator and just go down, well, there's R, like it once, and it's 0 0.91. So all we need to do in here is write 0.91. And then that would be Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient is 0.91. Right, the next bit is a bit tricky. It says write down the equation of the regression line y equals on it y on x. Okay, now what this is all about, it's to do with the, the fact that we've got two variables. Remember, it, it may ask you, not on this particular question, but on a different question, it may ask you to take this data and draw a scatter diagram for it. Remember a scatter diagram you would have your x here, this would be your number of trees, and then this will be your depth of snow, so depth, I'll just put d for depth of snow, this would be your y-axis, and you'd plot the information 
here so you'd have maybe the dots going up like this okay and then it may ask you to draw a, um, a line of best fit and remember you'd have to work out the means first the x bar and y bar and you plot that coordinate first that's the one in red and then your line of best fit would be a straight line that went through that point okay so that would be your well actually there will be the numbers we worked out here and here actually that will be 50 across and 30.5 okay that will be your um, scatter diagram with your line of best, script, best fit but the linear regression is the equation of that line of best fit okay the most accurate line of best fit and it's a straight line graph so it's y equals mx plus c okay that's basically asking that's what it wants it wants you to work out the y equals mx plus c equation for your line of best fit or for the most accurate line of best fit and again we're going to do all of that on the calculator all right so let's go back to the calculator let's just scroll to the top so we can see our data we don't really need to see it okay remember we've used columns a b c and d now because that's where the results go all right so let's go to menu and we want to go to stats stats calculation and we want the first linear regression model has got mx plus b now if you know if you're in anywhere in britain we say mx plus c but the americans and other places they say mx plus b but we say plus c anyway just a technicality well let's click that right again we need to tell it where our x data is well that's in column x that we labeled and it says where's your y data we well, labeled it column y again we haven't got anything here so we just press tab 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 Whereas the last column it says, is column E empty to put the results in? Well, it is, so press OK. And then we have it here. So this is the Y equals MX plus C. It's even got a template for you to follow MX plus, well, plus C, plus B, whatever. But this is your gradient, not, or your M value, 0 0.669. Okay? And then your B value is minus 2.9, well, let's say 9. Four six so minus two point nine four six. Okay, so your equation, your line of best fit is going to have the following equation. It's going to be y equals zero point six six nine times x, and because it's a negative value, it's going to be take away two point nine four six two point nine four six. Right. And then we can use this to estimate values now. We can make predictions, basically. It tells us that in the next part, we're going to have to use this equation. It says, if the number of trees in the area is 55, estimate the depth of snow. So remember, our variable x was to do with the number of trees. And it's telling us that if it was 55, well, when, what would y be? What would be a prediction for y? So let's work that out using this equation here y equals 0.669 well times well we want it to be 55 here for the number of trees take away 2.946 and let's just work out what that would be on the calculator so 0. Point, so 0. 0.669 times 55 take away 2.946 and to let's say one decimal place 33.8 centimeters so that would be an estimate for the depth of snow Okay, right, let's move on. And this is an, that's an estimate, basically. Um, let's look at the next question. It says, use a diagram, sorry, use the equation of the regression line, so this equation again, to estimate the depth of snow in an area with 100 trees. All right, 100 trees. Okay, so we're going to have to put 100 in here. So we're going to do 0 0.669 times 100, take away... 2.946 and let's see what that comes out to be so 0.669 times 100 take away 2.946 um, 63.95 which roughly equals 64 centimeters so that will be one of these you put down as your answer right but it's this question here it says decide whether this estimate is valid or not okay now there's two things to look at, really, depending on the question itself. First of all, our Pearson's value, R, is 0.91, okay? Now, remember, Pearson's is somewhere between 1 and minus 1, and the closer to these n values it is, the stronger the correlation, okay? So, it's 0.91, so it is a pretty strong correlation, 
Okay, so our estimate looking like our estimate is going to be pretty good. But we need to then look at what we actually substituted in itself. We substituted this value in 100 here. But if we go back to our table, if we go back to our table, um, okay, let me delete all this. Okay. If we go back to our table, and if we look at the values for x that we've already got, we've got well, let's see, the smallest value is 27, and the largest value is 75, okay? And we've just worked out what it would be if x was 100. It would be 64 here. But if you look at our data range, the smallest is 27, 75 is the largest. 100 is well outside of that data range, okay? So what we're actually doing here is our prediction, we're extrapolating, okay? Extrapolating. Um, so basically, Rx equals 100, our estimate 100, where Y is 64, okay, is outside our data range, outside data range. So that means our estimate is not a very valid one, okay, so not very reliable, because it lies outside of our estimate. If it was inside, like the other one was 55, okay, well that's fine, okay, that's a good estimate. Okay, so when, so when x was 55, whatever y was, um, that's a good estimate because that's within those two parameters of 27 and 75. Sorry, our two range for 27 and 75, that's well within there. But this 100 lies outside, so it's not a reliable estimate. So you have to really look at those two things, Pearson's and whether this prediction we made is within our data range. Okay, So that's really it for Pearson's and linear regression and two variables really, they're only ever gonna ask you to work out those three things really. And again, all of that is just done on the calculator. Again, mean, median, so mean, standard deviation on calculator, Pearson's on the calculator, and the linear regression form. Remember, it's a straight, it's the equation of the line of best fit, y equals mx plus c. And both of those numbers come from the calculator. Here's your m, here's your c. And that's pretty much it.